Okay, hey guys, I did not record our class session, so I'm just recording this for the people who can't be here today. Um, and I know there's a lot of us out on quarantine now, so I hope you guys are doing okay at home. Um, so the first thing we need to talk about, you are going to be writing an essay on Jamaica Kincaid's language choices in her essay on seeing language, on seeing England for the first time. So this is called a rhetorical analysis essay in which you are analyzing the way that the author is being persuasive to a certain audience, right? <coughs> Excuse me, I promise don't, I don't have Corona. Actually, I can't promise that, who knows? Um, but let's talk first about setting up your paper. So uh, watch this video, have it on in the corner of your screen, and then and then uh, as I am doing it, set up your page because I am noticing that we have different ideas of what MLA format means and we all need to be kind of on the same page for this. So um, I have opened my Google Doc. Um, actually, let's do this with a new Google Doc and I will show you from the beginning. So. Here it is. I'm going to name it so that I can find it later. I'm going to name it Kincaid Essay. It doesn't really matter what you name it. Okay, and then I've got a setup for MLA format. So the first thing I need to do is I need to switch this font from Arial to Times New Roman. That's really important. Second thing, I don't want it at 11. I want it at 12. All MLA documents are in Times New Roman 12-point font. That's always the same. Um, okay, there's one other thing that we need to do before we start writing anything. <clears throat> you go here um to this one the one that says line spacing click on that and click double there we go we've got mla format now ready to go so uh what we need is we need my name full name and we need the date there are other things that you could include in mla format you could include the teacher you could include what the assignment is called but for the purposes of my class this is plenty you're writing very short essays in here you don't need to get all fancy with the headers let's just leave it at this then you press enter once no more than once you go up here to the align and do you notice how this is aligned on the left side Okay, you go up to your, here to align, you click center align, and then you give this thing a title. So I want to talk about in my essay, I really like how she talks about mutton in her essay, I don't know why, but I'm going to say the juxtapositions of mutton and jewels in, <laughs> that's a terrible title, uh, let's say, um, whatever, <laughs> this is a terrible title because it's not representative of my whole paper, but whatever, the juxtaposition of mutton and jewels in Jamaica Kincaid's On Seeing England for the First Time. Okay, got a long title there. You notice how it's all centered, right? Okay, now you do not press enter more than once. Just press enter once. There's no extra spaces in MLA. Then go back up here, click left align, tab, because the first paragraph should tab, and then you start writing. Okay, now let's, I just want to show you, um, no, let's talk about what you do for your intro right here. So it's just like any other rhetorical analysis where you use soapstones for your intro. So you're going to tell me who is Kincaid, where is she from, where did she publish this, with which audience in mind, what is her purpose, you know, um, what's happening around this time period, the essay was published in 1991, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is where you give context for the essay. So you just tell me everything you know about kind of like the history of this essay. In order to do that, we haven't talked about that much in class. That is what the internet is for. Whenever you need to provide context, do a little snooping around the internet, find some information about Jamaica Kincaid, find some information about 1991, like there's tons of stuff out there. You can find all of this on Wikipedia and kind of like fill in the blanks of, of the soapstone stuff. All right, so you've got soapstones at the intro. And then at the end of your intro, you write a thesis statement. In fact, I'm going to make this very clear that this is your introduction paragraph right here. And I'm going to make it bold. Then you're going to write a thesis statement. Your thesis statement is the argument of Kincaid's essay plus at least three observations about her language choices. So I'll show you the one that I wrote. I thought I wrote one. 
Maybe I did not write one. Let's write one together then. Okay, so I think that Jamaica Kincaid's argument is all about this idea of erasing her like personality because she's been brainwashed by her education, right? So I'm going to say Kincaid argues that um, uh, her that her education in a colonized country was akin to that just means like similar to um, brainwashing and for and um, caused her to and ah there we go made it so she was unable to form her own identity and her own opinions based on her physical reality in Antigua. Uh, she makes this Antigua. There we go. She makes this argument by using, um, let's say, juxtapositions, um, metaphors, and what's another thing I'd like to talk about? Um, I think I would like to talk about the imagery in the setting. So uh, imagery that describes the setting. There we go. So I'm going to have um, at least three paragraphs in this, but quite honestly, I'm probably going to have multiple paragraphs about juxtapositions. But that's my thesis statement. It's got the argument and it's got the um, language choices that she makes. So it's very similar to your born, in, born a crime analyses where you have the argument that Trevor Noah made, then plus logos, ethos, pathos. But this time, instead of talking about logos, ethos, pathos, you're talking about the ways that she builds those things. So I'm saying that he that she builds these things through juxtapositions, metaphors, and imagery. She's creating pathos through all those three through three things. She's creating ethos, creating logos. I I am going to set those terms aside and just focus on her language choices here. Okay, so that's the beginning of your essays. Um, I'm leaving this here so that I remember to come back to it and fix this and make sure that I write a uh, full introduction, right? Okay, so then I have a new paragraph in MLA format. You just press enter once. There's no extra spaces. And then you click tab. Now it's time to write your topic sentence. Last class, we talked about topic sentences. We talked about the, how you, uh, in a topic sentence, you have an argument that the writer is making plus one language choice that you're going to focus on in this paragraph. So I have one already written here. I was looking at the very first sentence. Actually, I think it's the second sentence. Look, it's the wrong format. That's going to drive me crazy. It needs to be 12 point. Okay. I think it was the second sentence in her essay. Let me grab it really quick. Look, this is fun. It's like you're here with cla here in class with me, and you're getting all of the wasted time of me trying to find stuff. Okay. So, yeah, if you opened the Kincaid essay, the second sentence says, The England I was looking at was laid out on a map gently, beautifully, delicately, a very special jewel. It lay on a bed of sky blue. The background of it, the map, its yellow form, mysterious, because though it looked like a leg of mutton, it could not really look like anything so familiar as a leg of mutton, because it was England, with shadings of pink and green, unlike any shadings of pink and green I had seen before, squiggly veins of red running in every direction. So what I've noticed about that sentence, and we talked about this in class with everyone is that it moves from very positive descriptions of England being beautifully delicately gently laid out like a very special jewel you think of all the connotations of the word jewel like it's beautiful it's precious it's um, expensive but then she goes on to talk about mutton as her metaphor and she starts talking about how it's not even familiar as mutton mutton is like a very basic kind of um it's a leg of lamb so it's kind of like a cheap kind of meat it's also very associated with english culture and england i don't know if you know this they're not known for their fine cuisine um the, people say that english food is some of the worst food and then she's using these colors like pink and green and red those colors could not be less complimentary right when you think of pink and green like i think it like Reminds me of vomit for some reason. It seems disgusting. So I wanted to think about the way that Kincaid creates a what's called a juxtaposition. A juxtaposition is when you put two things next to each other with contrasting effect. You can justify you can juxtapose metaphors or images or tones or arguments, anything that you put next to each other in order to contrast them. So in this case, I want to think about tone. 
And in this sentence, it's, I, I, I noticed that she moves from this very positive tone to this kind of like lackluster, even disgusted tone. So I said, Kincaid juxtaposes a whimsical, joyous tone with an indifferent and even disgusted tone to argue that England has invaded her way of thinking. So notice my topic sentence has the argument. England has invaded her way of thinking. It doesn't have the entire argument, just a piece of the argument that I'm going to be I'm going to be proving right here at the beginning. And it has observations about the language choices, which in this case is the tone. So I've combined those two, and this is going to be the argument for my paragraph.